Talking even folks, Dr. Freedom Rooter, Times of Dr. News. News from in around the Hooniverse that may or may not make you go, <laughs> I'm not kidding. Less than two weeks from premiere night, and we finally get a time, you know, a time confirmed, you know, for the air, you know, air time. Now, it just knocks me out that they waited until this literally, uh, you know, going on, was it 12 days left? Something like that? They finally go, oh, by the way, show's going to be airing, uh, uh, well, 11 days left now. But still, it just amazes the shit out of me. And now, you know, unless you've been living somewhere in a cave where you're, you know, somewhere on racks of Corica, Falabatorius, with your head up a Slovene's ass, you should know by now that October 7th, Doctor Who will air at 6.45 p.m., uh, you know, UK time, BBC One. Now, that means 1.45 here. I'm going to try to get the gang together to record the Omega Files by about 5. Don't worry, we'll watch it through some legal means that you won't discuss. And but I died laughing today because I was over on Dr. Who and Unity on Facebook. And I love it when people try to slag you off and you got shit to back it up because he, he goes, does anybody even watch this shit? And he said this on one of my links and I usually get pretty good responses from there. And I'm like, well, somebody's being an a-hole. So to which I replied, okay, uh, 4,573 subscribers on YouTube, 1,211 followers on Twitter, 3,336 followers on Dr. Amino, 2,346 followers on Facebook for the Dr. Freedom Facebook page. I'd say, yeah. And then after that, I put an image of a crow. <laughs> it's like, I hate to toot my own horn, but yeah, there are people out there who watch. You know, I can't complain. We're averaging about 100 likes per video. And Considering this thing started out as just something I was doing as a hobby, I'm so glad you folks are out there with me. I've tried to keep a level sane head through everything. Um, it's just there's too many people out there, you know, making too too much shit up. Um, so we weren't too far from the 7 p.m. that we heard before. It's just they've backed it up a few minutes, which I can understand. Um, the, uh, now, keep in mind, you know, opening episode is 65 minutes. But let's get into it. Let's get onto it. Let's go ahead and hop on what we do have right now in Dr. Hairland, a happy place where Jody will take you on cruises. No, wait, that's a love boat. I don't think that was Julie took you on cruises. But okay, um, so time slot confirmed, 6.45 to 7.45 p.m. I think these guys have lost the plot and forgotten that, if I remember correctly, the opening episode runs 65 minutes, and that was confirmed a long time ago. Now, this is the one synopsis we do have. We don't get aliens in Sheffield. In a South Yorkshire city, Ryan Sinclair, Yasmin Khan, and Graham O'Brien are about to have their lives changed forever. As a mysterious woman, unable to remember her own name, falls from the night sky. Can they believe in what she says? And can she help solve the strange events taking place across the city? Action adventure, action adventure for all the family. Starring Jenny Whitaker, Bradley Walsh, Tossin Cole, and Manda Gill. Guest starring Sharon e. Clark, Johnny Dixon, Samuel Oatley, and written by Chris Chibnall and directed by Jamie Childs. Um, now, this will this means Doctor Who will air directly after Country File, which is watched between you know by like four to six million people per week. It'll be followed by Strictly come butt licking the results. I love that we were getting pushed around by Strictly. Yeah, now you're coming before him on Sunday, right? So. And, of course, ITV will be offering a game show in opposition, Five Gold Rings, presented by Philip Schofield. BBC Two will be showing King Arthur's Britain, The Truth on Earth, a new documentary you know, delving into that murky historical period of the Arthurian legends. I've been reading I've been listening to a little, a little bit on that lately. So kind of interesting because it's the basis for another story. Now I'm not doing an audio on that. It's just something I've been tinkering with for a long time. Um, yeah, lines have all been sent out and handed in for Chapter 1 of – the volume four of Dr. Freedom and Eric, by the way, and that is going to be, you know, what, what lies beneath. So, and of course, BBC America also has confirmed the time at 1.45 p.m. on there, and which makes sense. I got it because somebody forwarded to me, Lee Zomba had come on, you know, BBC, you know, news entertainment reporter had confirmed it. All right, new cast and synopsis for you know, details. Now, what I like here over on Colt Box, so they've got the new synopsis, which is, Jodie Whittaker makes an interview as a 13th Doctor Who crash lands following an explosive regeneration that has apparently destroyed the TARDIS. She finds herself lost and alone in Sheffield with no memory of who she used to be and has an encounter with three seemingly ordinary people whose lives are about to change forever. I faded into Robin Leach. Shit. All right. 
Here's the complete cast list. We know this. We know this. All right. First, Grace, as she's now being called by Sharon e. Clark, Tim Shaw, Samuel L. Carl, Johnny Dixon, Rahul, Amit Shaw, Asha Kingsley is, be, is uh, playing Sonia. Now, this is the lady we keep seeing on the bridge with him, by the way. That's the lady whose name I can't remember till now. You know, in the photos where she's out in Sheffield with him, she's walking along on the bridge. You know, very lovely lady with the dark glasses. That's her. Okay, Janie, Janine Melor, Ramesh Sunda is played by Asif Khan. Oh, God, Asif Khan. Okay, sounds like something Jim Kirk would say. Asif Khan. Okay, Asif Khan. James Thackeray is being played, uh, is playing Andy. Dean is being played by Philip Abedion. And Dennis being played by Stephen McKenna. And Gabriel is being played by Everett A. Walsh. Um, this information was released in the Radio Times listing, so if you want to check theirs, I don't know why you would. They suck. Um, I'm not kidding. Radio Times is infamous. They take one interview and split it in like six different articles with six different headlines. It just, ugh. That's why I, got, that's why I stopped using them. It was too much of a pain in the rear. All right, early reactions to the doctor, the woman who fell to earth. If you want to go check this out, there are no spoilers. So you ain't got to worry about that. It's just people giving their various takes. Uh, here's a lovely shot. By the way, they're saying, from what I've seen on a photo earlier on Twitter, this is an actual metal sign out on the new tarps, which is kind of neat. So if you want to go read these various tweets and all that they've collected, none of them have broken ranks or anything like that, so you ain't got to worry about spoilers. 13th Doctor Volume Zero. Anybody remember that? Of course, um, Italian Comics are, of course, publishing the 13th Doctor Volume Zero, the ultimate celebration of the Doctor's many, many lives, and a special primer ahead of the Titans' new ongoing 13th Doctor comic book series this autumn. Um, what's really neat about this, though, is they've got some preview shots here for it if you've not seen these yet. So it's a little bit of an update, and here's some stuff we've already seen. I really love this scene right here. You are. Peter Capaldi's regenerating, and they play some other lines and other things. And uh, I hate to say it, but I still think she looks stoned. I really do. Just oh, I shouldn't have sniffed those mushrooms. All right, move. On. And here's some preview pages if you want to look. Like, well, you know what? There's the there's some Doctor and Ace. <laughs> okay, the War Doctor, the Wedged In Doctor. Of course, there's Dave Tennant. So some really nice preview shots. If you want to go check out the first few pages, boom, aha, there it is. Moving forward, the unofficial Doctor Annual 1972 fan project, the unofficial Doctor Annual 1972, is to be published February of 20 and 20 uh, February 2019, with a host of star names involved. You know, Katie Manning, John Levine, Mike Tucker, and Al Alistair Pearson, or Alistair, sorry, have all contributed to the publication, joining a large number of Doctor Who fan writers and artists. So keep this out, blah, blah, blah. Here's some stuff about them. Keep, keep in mind, February 2019, there is a Facebook page set up for this. You get a link to it right here if you wish. Moving forward, Doctor Who's move. The Sunday nights was very a much decision made by the BBC higher-ups. No shit, Sherlock. We've been saying that for weeks over here, you know, because I have the most intelligent fans in the known universe. I really... And we all kind of figured this out, that this is a floor six decision. So if you want to read into this a little bit, it's not that big of a read, and it gives you a little info, bam. All right, moving forward. Okay, this is the one that, like I said, this was the, sh the flame heard around the world. I still couldn't believe This guy, by the way, if you want to go look him up, posted a tweet earlier trying to backpedal, meaning saying, I was referring to the era as a whole. That's funny. You could have just said season this, season that, you dipshit. I hate to say, I really, I hate the curse in these videos. But the thing is, I could call this guy a whole creative bunch of names that have really come to mind lately. So BBC Sparks do upset over the controversial statement on Peter Capaldi. Now, of course, yeah, Ian Young's, he's already, if you want to go look him up, he's right here. He already tried to post a, a thing saying, I was taken out of conscience, these vacuous lies. You're full of shit, dude. Now you're now that you've taken the heat for you know dissing on Peter, you're trying to backpedal your way out of the sewer that you've buried yourself in, you cheap piece of. So, okay, point taken, and I'm in the majority of the universe that loves him, and I was referring to his ear as much as his performance. Bullshit. 
You didn't say era. You said Peter Capaldi. Who? Who certainly wasn't universally loved? You sack of lying crap. So, yeah, even Nicola Bryant hopped on him. I am completely, and of course, you remember Nicola plays Perry, you know, or played Perry back in the day. Perry. Um, I am completely appalled by this utter nonsense, these viscous lies. Um, okay, I misquoted the other. And this is what she said. The, the way to promote a new series is not to dish the predecessor. The Peter Capaldi was and is very much loved as an actor, a human being, and as a doctor. You, however, BBC, are a disgrace. Go to your room. Grow up. Now, well, like I said, I love how he's trying to dig his way out of this with a general... Oh, it just amazes the shit out of me. The word universally is fairly crucial. Yeah, you're being a dick and you got caught out on it. Go crawl back in your hole, worm. All right, filming for Keeping Face Second Series begins. I just threw this in because I really enjoyed this series. And even though it's more, you know, it's kind of like touchy-feely kind of. You women folk will love it, I see. Oh, no. The feminists are calling. Oh, I'll get it. I'm just kidding. No, it's, um, like I said, you got to watch it for yourself. It's a, it's a, you know, it starts off, and then it gets a bit more intriguing, gets a bit more suspenseful. Then it does this left turn, that left turn, and it's like, holy damn. It's a really good series. I really love to join and watch it. Eve Miles is astounding in this series. She really is. And just to think, they originally did this in Welsh, and it was so well received in Wales that they did the English version. And it's, it's amazing. I, I cannot recommend it enough. And season two, of course, has now began filming. Oh, by the way, remember, uh, Jody will be on BBC Radio 6 tomorrow at 0700. So you may want to check that out, or they'll probably, if I remember right, they'll have it up for replay here later in the day. Oh, and just as a side note, um, some of you folks may have been aware that there were a group of fans out there making a virtual walkthrough of the Enterprise D. And it, all it was was a walkthrough. There was no story, no plot line, no music. I think maybe some background special effects. And they did this as a labor of love. They did this for the fans. They, I don't know if they're collecting money on it. I really don't. But they've been slapped with a cease and desist notice by Paramount. Apparently, fandom is once again going to become the whipping boys of the corporations. That's the only thing I can figure out. These people are promoing your show out of their own pocket. And you're going to go over there and kick them in the nads. Now, sure, yes, the, that stuff is your copyrighted property over there at Paramount. But they, I, don't think, I don't know if they're collecting money on it or not. I don't think they were. And it's not like they, it was, you know, they're doing like an Axe and R thing where they're shilling out millions of dollars on a, you know, a show that was basically going to you know, or a movie that was going to basically beat the shit out of any Star Trek you've done since 2009. They were just trying to show people, look, here's this beautiful view, this beautiful set, this beautiful bridge scene, you know, the whole ship, basically little bits of it here and here, here and there. And he went and pissed on him. And that's the way it's going to be from now on. We'll protect our copyright, even if it means kicking our fans in the head. Sorry to get a little, you know, riled up there, but I know that last bit has nothing to do with Dr. Who, but it kind of worries me because you see Dr. Freedom and Eric, as I said, is fan fiction. It really is. And if they ever came after me saying, well, you have to cease and desist and all that, I, I easily claim not for profit status. Because as I told you before, I, uh, I hired Sophie Alder to do her voice for Skydark. And trust me, as of that point, Dr. Freedom and Eric was like $400 in a hole. And I'm not saying, like I said, she really worked with me how to get that price down that far, really. She didn't really make any commission off that. The agency basically did. And the only reason she charged me is because union rules. So now when she comes on a podcast as herself, you know, she, she never asked for money. So, oh, well, I got to get out of here. You know, enough talking horseshit. Remember, Doctor Who, 6.45 p.m. on um, October 7th, which is unfortunately a Sunday. Um, I'm trying to get the guys together. So we'll, we're going to do a podcast. You know, I'll get it recorded around five to six, well, between five and six. That way I can get it edited and get it up because I have to be at work the following morning at 5 a.m. So I'm just hoping I can get, you know, pretty much everybody in there. 
I've been ranting on long, long enough, so let me get the hell out of here. Everybody take care. Ta-ta. Enjoy the rest of your day. So good night, Chris. Good night, Chris. See, there you go.